Today we're introducing our intercooler pump kits. I've had a lot of requests wanting some type of completion kit or some type of pump that's recommended for our intercoolers. Uh, so what we've decided to do is come up with a little bit of a kit solution for you guys to help you along the, the journey of, of, of making the connection between ice tank and intercooler. So we're offering this in four different options. Uh, for our 1400 horse cooler, we're doing a single and a dual feed kit. And then for our bigger intercoolers, uh, we are also offering a dual and single feed kit for them as well. The single feed kit for the 1400 horsepower intercooler looks something like this. You're gonna get a Davies Craig 30 gallon per minute pump. It will come with a inlet fitting for the pump, which is a 16 O-ring to dash six male. It will also include a 16 O-ring to dash 12 male. Then it will include two dash 12 uh, O-ring dash 12 male fittings. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna feed your pump with a 16 line, and then the pump is gonna feed your intercooler system with a 12 line and then you'll do a 12 return from the air cooler back to the tank that comes with two plugs to plug off the additional ports in the intercooler as well the dual feed option uh it comes with the davies craig 40 gallon per minute pump uh same 16 feed on the inlet side of the pump and it will have a 16 outlet on the pump uh, and then from there we'll move from the pump to the to a y fitting we'll feed our y fitting with a 16 and we'll have two 12s coming out and then going into the intercooler, we'll have our 12 O-ring to 12 male fittings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed the front tank uh, with both on both sides. And what that does is give you a better distribution of flow and it gives you more flow because we've moved this size uh, feeding hose to a 16 and then split it to two, to two 12s. Uh, so that's gonna allow more coolant flow through the intercooler core itself. And then the additional two fittings uh, needed to return the two 12s into another Y. So the return fittings will Y into the same type of Y block, and then you'll have a 16 return to your coolant tank. Uh, with this kit, you don't need the plugs to plug off any additional holes because there aren't any additional holes. Another thing to note on, on both of these kits, uh, single feed and dual feed, you have the option of a 90 degree O-ring to mail. Uh, and what that does is gives you a a little bit better install so it tucks it a little closer to the intercooler as far as making your hose connections and it just gives you a nice clean install now with all of these kits uh, they do not come with line hose ends or a tank seemingly endless amount of variables there are cars boats fan boats down in louisiana we've seen them on everything now no two kits are alike so what we like to recommend is that if you do have an application that requires you know maybe a little bit of help with deciding to what, what size tank to use, um, what exactly to get, you know, how much hose do you need, what hose is do you think I'm gonna have, uh, give our guys a call. Uh, give, give us a call, talk to a sales guy, and he'll point you in the right direction. Uh, generally speaking, the single feed, 1400 horsepower intercooler, um, a tank that is two to three gallons, I like to suggest three to five gallons at the minimum. And then for anything over 1500 horsepower, anything that you're going to be using the 40 gallon per minute pump, I like to recommend a five gallon tank at the minimum. Uh, I've seen guys use seven and nine. Uh, five's a pretty good number for cruising. Um, seven and nine will just be even better if you can if you can deal with the extra weight. Yeah, well for drag for drag car applications, I still like to recommend a five gallon, uh, and I like to rec recommend a five gallon with you know stuff full of ice. Um, it's going to melt some of that ice as it goes. Uh, but it will it will make sure that it's always drawing a nice cold portion of water instead of uh, instead of any chance of the the temperatures rising. So I recommend the Davies Craig uh, because of their you know durability. Um, they work great. They don't really give any problems. Uh, now if someone is going to use a different brand, I would just strongly recommend that they understand the flow rates of the pump that they're getting. Uh, and just make sure that they're getting something that's going to move enough water to actually cool their application. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it's a, a bilge pump or an inline pump. A lot of guys use, use bilge pumps. I've personally used bilge pumps in the past. Uh, they work good as well. But for, for most cars or most builds, um, the, way that, the way that tank sizing and, and shape uh, is a factor, these just fit a lot better in a, uh, in a custom application. Uh, well, these are made to run all the time. Um, 
that's probably the way I would recommend doing it. Because if you if you put it on a bill or if you put it on a hob switch or something to where it's only going to run when there's boost, um, the water that's in the intercooler is just getting hot. And then as soon as you have boost, you know your intercooler's hot and the cold water hasn't gotten there yet. So it's it, it kind of makes sense to let it run all the time, in my opinion. So heat exchangers are nice in certain applications that would require them. Drag cars are typically not your application that would require any kind of heat exchanger. Uh, a lot of those guys just have big tanks in the back and if they do street drive them, they're not driving them for long enough periods of time to actually need that water to be cooled back off because it's never really getting hot in the first place. Something that's going to be street driven a lot, um, some type of maybe road course applications, off-road applications, things like that. A heat exchanger with a fan mounted to it is actually a great idea. Um, because it keeps that water temperature consistent uh, as as you're wheeling or as you're uh, as you're road course racing, and you know you've got airflow going through it. It's cooling like a radiator does. Uh, it'll bring the temperatures, you know, it'll, they'll, they'll kind of they'll kind of equalize, and you won't have any kind of co constant rise in temperature or anything like that. Uh, so that's good for something that's going to be ran uh, a long duration of time. Yeah, it's, it's completely separate of the engine. Uh, there's people that have, I guess, asked in the past if, if we would recommend doing that, and I personally do not recommend doing that. You're putting extra load on the water pump that you're using to cool your engine, uh, or you're putting a separate pump on it to draw coolant from your radiator, uh, which is taken away from coolant that's being plumbed through your engine. Uh, I like to keep these systems separate. That way you can have uh, the best cooling ability on the intercooler as you can, as well as the best cooling ability for your engine. Uh, so I like BTFE lines. Um, you can use your traditional rubber style lined hose. Uh, it just needs to have a good temperature rating on it, uh, probably above 300, 350 degrees. Um, not saying that anybody's water is going to get that hot, but you know there's a chance that uh, maybe it's close to an exhaust system or something and it's got heat inside and outside. So I like to recommend a higher temperature rating that way people don't have uh, problems pop up that maybe could have been avoided. For me, an icebox, I like something to be um, fit well to the car. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of like a big giant box just sitting in somebody's back seat. Um, now I have seen some people get creative with coolers and things like that. I know you do that yourself and I like that kind of thing as well. Um, but you know as long as it's got enough volume, like I say three to five gallons is my minimum recommendation. As long as it's got that volume you can get pretty creative as far as the tank's concerned. If you're going to put ice in it, it definitely needs to have a, it, don't, don't use a fuel cell because getting ice in a fuel cell hole is a little bit of a pain in the butt. Yeah, technically it does need to be vented. Yeah, ideally you'd have uh, the, the feed to the pump as low as you possibly can and then the return, you know, just high on the opposite corner of the tank. It's easier for that water to, to go with, you know, it's natural, what, what, what natural forces are pulling it toward the back of the cooler anyway with, with gravity. Um, it's just easier on the pump itself to, to do that task if it's not pushing that weight of water. Uh, you know, it can become, there's, there's certain instances where G-forces could make that water stagnate. stagnate. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a problem with like fuel systems especially. A lot of guys running mechanical pumps up front on the engine with a big feed line to the pump. Uh, if they have a really fast 60 foot time, they're leaving really hard, that, that fuel will actually stay in place and the pump will sometimes lose its prime. That's been a problem for years. Um, it's kind of that same scenario. So I like to put it where the water is always pushing back toward the back of the engine or with G-forces. That way that there's no kind of like stagnant flow. So with the volume of pumps that we've been selling for intercooler kits, we decided to go ahead and make a uh, universal bracket. Uh, for you guys that way we can install these pumps a little more easily uh, and so what we did is we took and uh, made it to where you could clock this thing uh, and rotate it all around you can flip this bracket both sides uh, that way you can get your your you know your outlet pointed exactly where you want want it pointed for, for for your best install 
Uh, and then we also have this uh, 90 degree bracket, mounting bracket that, that can be used for uh, bolting this pump down. So either way, the, the flat plate comes with two bolts in it uh, that go through it in this direction. Uh, you can use those to bolt this pump if you'd like, if you'd like to make your own bracket. Uh, or you can use our bracket and then your, it gives you two bolt holes to be able to bolt this thing down on a flat surface. Uh, aside from that, you can also weld these on. So the flat bracket itself, you can weld that to a piece of tubing on your roll cage, uh, you know, in any manner that you'd like, uh, and it will be, you know, it'll be strong enough to support the, the pump if you do it that, if you decide to go that route. Uh, so lots of options with this bracket, uh, lots of different ways to go about it. So uh, just something, just something universal for you guys to to help with the install.